Welcome again as we continue to look at tips for Wednesday's IB Biology exam. These tips, of course, are based on recommendations from the IB Biology examiners from the November 2020 exams. So, in this question, it's a classic example of a dihybrid inheritance that follows a slightly non-Mendelian pattern, which means when you cross two double heterozygotes, you won't get your typical 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio. And the data in the question does provide this for you to see. Of course, the thing with genetics questions like this is it's more about the vocabulary and less about the actual question itself. It's so much words that you have to unravel and then of course all of the ratios and then the clock is ticking in the examination. The only way around this for you, the student, is to practice with a number of genetics questions, typically from your past exams or from other sources, until you master the vocabulary and all of the nuances that can arise in questions like this one. But as the question says, once you have the big W, it doesn't matter what you have at the other gene locus that affects the coat. The presence of the big W alone masks everything else in the phenotype. And the only thing that gets expressed is the wire phenotype. So once a dog has the wire type coat, it means we know it's got at least one big W here on this locus, and it really doesn't matter what it has on any other locus. The presence of the big W gives the wired coat. And the question goes on to say that when long-haired dogs are crossed among themselves, the offspring is always long-haired. But given what we know about the wired genotype and the wired phenotype, then these long-haired dogs would necessarily be two small Ws. Because if they had any big W's, then they won't be long-haired. They would be wire-haired. So we already know that they're going to be homozygous on the W locus. But what are they going to be on the long-haired locus, which is designated as K according to the question? So are they going to be a big K and another big K? Are they going to be a big K and little k or two little k's? Well, the key to that is the word always. If the offspring of a cross between a long and a long is always going to be long, then it's suggesting to you that there are no heterozygotes here in the genotype. And could they all be dominant? It could be that they're all, all of the long-haired dogs in the population are dominant. But what is more likely is that a dog only ends up being long-haired when it's homozygous for the recessive. So what is most likely from this data is that the long-haired dog is two little w's and two little k's. But you might not be certain about that until you look at the last bit of data in the question. Let's take a look. The data which confirms the genotype of this dog is found in this information. When dogs heterozygous for each of the genes are crossed, you get the ratio of 12 to 3 to 1. If we lay out the Punnett square using the assumption that when a dog is small k, small k, then it becomes long-haired, then we would confirm that the genotype of the long-haired dog is in fact two small w's and two small k's. So let's fill out this Punnett square. And here is how we'll confirm the genotype of the long-haired dog. When you cross dogs that are heterozygous for each of the genes, so this double heterozygous cross, here we lay out the gametes for dog number one, and we lay out the gametes for dog number two. And 
we look at the genotypes of the offspring. Here we see that there's the presence of one big W. That big W means, according to the data in the question, that this dog with this big W must have the wired type coat. So we can go down checking all of these off as wired coats. Going down this column again, we see there's a big W here, so this is going to be wired, this, this, and this. Doing the same going across this way now. These two have already got a big W, but this is going to get the big W from over there. And so to here, giving us a total here of 12, 12 wired coats. Then, to confirm that the long-haired dog is brought about by a homozygous for the recessive, we can see here that small w, small k, and small w, small k accounts for the one in the ratio. That one dog that is long-haired. And then there are three dogs that are smooth-haired. And the smooth hair, you can realize, that arises when you have homozygous for the small w. That's not going to allow the dog to be wired, because once you have the big w, it's wired. So then this dog here, with the two small w's and the two big k's, and then this one here, with one big k and one little k. So that suggests to you that the big k in the presence of homozygous for the little w is what gives you the smooth-haired dog. And the long-haired dog could only arise when you have homozygous recessive and homozygous recessive. So this two here, this one, is going to be a smooth-haired dog because it's got one big K. And that satisfies the ratio given in the question of 12 to 3 to 1. Unfortunately, no credit is actually given for this. The student must read all of it, use all of the data, and confirm, first of all, what is the genotype of the male wire-haired dog, and then look at the second part of the question for two marks. So now that we've confirmed that the long-haired female dog has this genotype, and of course, we've already established that the male wire-haired dog has this genotype, then, across of this with this, the question is asking, how could we show that a smooth-haired puppy would arise from this cross? So again, we need to lay out, and this time, no need for a full 16 squares. We establish the four gametes here as big W, big K, big W, little K, small w, big k, and small w, small k. And then there's only going to be one possible gamete here with this double homozygous genotype. That's small w, small k. And then you can go across and look at the various genotypes that you would get here. And again, following that reasoning that we established previously, the presence of one big W means that you have a wire-haired dog. So that's two wire-haired dogs. The presence of a big K along with two small Ws gives a smooth-haired dog. And homozygous here, homozygous here, it's the same genotype as the mother. That is going to give a long-haired puppy. And that satisfies the data provided, two to one to one. All of this, unfortunately, for two marks in this question. In our next video, we look at relating structure to function in mitochondria. And you can click on the card above to go straight to that video.